Good day, I'm Jacques Vermeulen from McLaughlin Vermeulen and Associates and today we're going to discuss emotionally abusive relationship. Who emotionally abuses who? Please stay tuned if you would be interested in hearing more about this topic. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. This quote by Lewis Carroll in Alice in Wonderland describes emotional abusive relationships. The question is who abuses emotionally? And the answer quite frankly is we all are emotional abusers. It does just depends different circumstances, different times and we all fall into the trap of emotionally abusing another person. The difference is when the abuse is prolonged, part of the other person in the relationship and is damaging. In short, emotionally abusive relationships are like bullying on steroids. P.M. Fordney stated, when the healthy pursuit of self-interest and self-realization turns into self-absorption, other people can lose the intrinsic value in our eyes and become mere means to the fulfillment of our needs and desires. It's human nature to be selfish and boastful, now and then. But true narcissists, people who take this that little step too far, take it to the extreme. They don't just have extra self-confidence, they simply do not value other people's feelings or ideas and they ignore your needs. But there's a difference between being self-absorbed, often called a narcissist, and having narcissistic personality disorder, which is a mental illness. Someone that's described or could be described as a narcissist may appear to have high self-esteem, but the opposite is actually true. There's a deep sense of insecurity underneath that grand exterior. He wants others to be envious but often he's the jealous one. He's competitive and threatened by others' achievements. These relationships are often stormy and very short-lived. He leaves a trail of hurt, hurtful feelings and pain in his wake. This person will be easily hurt, but either chooses to not show it or overreacts in rage. He cannot stand criticism. He makes excuses and refuses to take responsibility for his flaws and failures. He sees himself as a natural leader who can easily sway others. He doesn't listen and often interrupts you. It's a one-way street, all take and no give. Someone can be a narcissist and not have this disorder. He may be self-absorbed and hyper-competitive, but not to the extent that it disrupts your daily life or those of the people around you. It's proven that most people are drawn to narcissists and find them attractive, charismatic and exciting. Confidence is charming and successful leaders are often more assertive and demanding. In conclusion, remember, the paradox about narcissism is that we all have the streak of egotism. 80% of people think they are better than average. Thank you for spending this time with me. Should you want to know more about this topic, please visit our website on www.vilepsychologists.co.za where we have a more detailed description of narcissism and what it means. This is then Jacques Vermeulen signing out today for McLaughlin Vermeulen and Associates. Good day.